This episode brought to you by Experium Boost. Increase your credit score instantly by taking back control. the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. Let's talk about one of my favorite movies of all time, Mary Poppins. No, let's not. Because why? There's nothing I can say about how awesome this movie is that millions of people haven't said already. It's a masterpiece of beautifully matched contradictions. It's colorful and obvious, yet dark and mysterious. It's energized and happy, yet slow moving and patient. It has one of the worst fake accents of all time coming out of one of the most likable characters of all time. It has some of the best songs ever written, sung by some of the best performances ever given, so much money, effects, care, and effort from two polar opposite creative geniuses for an innocent little kid story. Fred Rogers used to say it seems better to be deep and simple than shallow and complex. This movie seems like the definition of deep and simple, a one-of-a-kind mashing that can never be duplicated. But because we like to reward Disney slumming it, let's try anyway! <laughs> Mary Poppins Returns is the latest in a long line of unnecessary Disney sequel slash reboots. You might be wondering, well, which one is it, sequel or reboot? Fear not, it sucks at both. Made 54 years after the original premiere, this was an attempt to recapture the magic and fresh ideas of the timeless classic. I guess it's not a complete loss of an idea. After all, there were more Mary Poppins books. There was even a hit Disney Broadway musical that had the author, P.L. Travers, overseeing the production. Don't worry though, it doesn't try any of those smart ideas. It instead tries to continue the story with a brand new tale that somehow does the exact same thing the original did, except bad, and stupid, and bad. Well, I'm not accepting any Mary Poppins that isn't practically perfect in every way. That's why I'm calling in some very special help. Subtly beautiful music, that can only mean... It's Mary Poppins! The original Mary Poppins! <laughs> Hello, Nostalgia Critic. Hello, Mary Poppins. Fix your posture, we're not sloths. Sorry, Mary Poppins. There's a good boy. <laughs> right, I hear someone smearing my good name. Yes, right in there. All right, let's go. Spitzpot! Oh, she said Spitzpot! Oh, they think they're being unique by changing the logo again. You know, if you do that too many times, it's just not unique anymore, is it? No, Mary Poppins! Now let's change that right up. Wow! First, we'll put the logo back to the way it originally was. You don't have to rely on cheap gimmicks when you're actually good. Or practically perfect in every way. Quite now. Yeah, cool. Now, what's this? Len Manuel sings a song about lighting lamps and then it cuts to paintings behind the opening credits. Well, that's peculiar. Shouldn't it be the other way around so that it flows better? Why, I suppose it would. Oh, Mary Poppins, you really do fix everything. Good gracious, what is that? It sounds like an annoyingly dumbed down score that's confused for whimsical. <gasps> that can only mean... Get here. I've always been here. Now, where is that dreadful music coming from? Hello, Mary. Well, if it isn't Poppins 2.0. I understand you want to change our Disney formula. Hey, hey, you stay out of this reboot, Quill. We're trying to fix what you botched up. A lot of things have changed since you last showed up, Mary. Disney is more powerful than you could possibly imagine. Hmm. Powerful enough to steal from Star Wars? We own Star Wars. Oh, very impressive. Hey, we don't care how much you own. You can't recapture the magic of dancing chimney sweeps. Tea parties on ceilings. And snapping to get a job well done. Oh, well now in Disney, when you snap your fingers, something very different happens. No, don't do it! Mary! No! Oh! 
Oh. Well, she was practically boring in every way. She was a timeless treasure! Oh, please. She was from the 60s. Children have no interest in seeing anything from an age with no cell phones. She needs an update. And I am that update. You have no idea what children want! We're Disney. We tell them what they want. No! Lion King! Dumbo! Aladdin! Sleeping Beauty! All replaced, my dear boy. Mmm, it feels so scrumptious. You can't just erase these timeless classics like they never existed! I already have. Now get on with the review, and don't try to alter the Disney formula, because if you do, I have a lovely ashtray with your name on it. Spit spot. This is the new and improved As mentioned before, a semi-bert named Jack, played by Lin-Manuel Miranda, sings a song about being a lamplighter. For you're underneath the lovely London sky. Oh my god, is the bird lady dead? That's a happy start! I'm still feeding the birds, just with my lifeless corpse. Since you dream the night away, tomorrow's here, it's cold today. Honestly, the one thing I love in this movie that weirdly gets a lot of flack is the songs. Yes, they're heavily mimicking the lyrics and melodies from the original, even down to the same order they're being played, but it's likely that's what composer Mark Shaman was asked to do. Give us another Chim Chimney, give us another Supercalifragilistic, and so on. It's stupid that Disney wanted an imitation instead of something new, but with that said, they are good imitations. Clearly familiar, but still clever and hummable. Even if some of the singers go Michael Crawford on the last note. He's turning into Kevin McAllister from Home Alone 2. His bird lady is still alive! Through no segue whatsoever, we're given the opening credits, which clearly should have looked like this. Don't get me started on how Poppin should have looked. As we see, like in the first one, the bank's home in disarray. The bloody sinks exploded! Oh, oh again. Ugh, that classic problem. We see Jane and Michael have grown up, with Michael looking after the house with his three children, boy number one, boy number two, and girl. I call them that because they have so little personality, it's not even worth mentioning their names for you to forget. Literally any of their lines could be switched out with the other sibling, and it wouldn't make a difference. Well, we have grown up a good deal in the past year, after all. Oh, now wait a minute, I'm pretty sure that's a boy number two line. Why didn't Father believe you flew here on a kite? Well, now that seems out of character. That's clearly something girl would say. So you're staying? Well, that's such a character inconsistency, it should write for the final season of Game of Thrones! Topical. Two lawyers from the bank show up, though, saying Michael's house is in danger of being repossessed. You took out a loan with Fidelity Fiduciary Bank against the value of your home. It's hard enough these days, isn't it? Uh, yes, well, shh. Racist! So I hope you enjoy a lot of bank talk with no songs. It's just a mere 10 minutes of seat squirming boredom your kids have to get through. The bank is now demanding that you pay back the entire loan. It's piling up, I really had no choice. Seems you have fallen three months behind. But I work for Fidelity Fiduciary. Not as an accountant. It's all in the contract. Father left his shares in the bank. Do you have the shares certificate? The document proving you own shares in the bank. I do hope you find that shares certificate. If you are unable to pay in full by- Mommy, are they gonna talk about comparing interest rates and cost of property? Well, they just might, dear. Mary Poppins! Something you'll notice quickly is the movie has no momentum. The first film opened with a lot of talking inside the house too, but it was active, funny, moving, with songs, dance numbers. Even though they were talking about stuff kids would find boring, they made it entertaining. Here, what they're talking about is boring and it feels boring. The only movement we get is Emerald Boom, played this time by David Warner, setting off his cannon rocking the house. Which we've already seen! Done a lot better the first time they did it! Even when we do finally get a song, it's a slow downer song. Which doesn't feel earned because we've already been watching 10 minutes of slow downer stuff. Winter has gone, but not from this room. In both versions, Poppins arrives around the same time. In fact, it's eerie how close it is. But this version feels so much longer. 
Maybe if there was something new or challenging being talked about, that would make up for a little bit, but we have a bank that wants to take away their home, a trope so old it's in the Three Stooges game. Three interchangeable kids seem perfectly well behaved and get along with their dad. Isn't that exciting new territory? And apparently, there's a dead mother, which we have never ever 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 seen before. So clearly, all this slow-moving tedium is warranted. Why on earth did we save this old broken thing? Don't you remember that kite? Father made it the night he almost offed himself. Ah, good memories. When Poppins does finally show up, even that's a little weird. The kite flies away and one of the kids chases after it. But the music sounds less like a magical friend is about to appear and more like the Empire is gonna blow up planet Earth. tree, you will have no more child skeletons in your branches! The kite, though, is retrieved by Poppins, played by Emily Blunt, after robbing Agent Carter's wardrobe at gunpoint. You'll need to be more careful when the wind rises, Georgie. You nearly lost your kite. Wait, the little boy's name is Georgie? Well, we all know what really should have been at the end of that string. Hiya, Georgie! I was just your age when we first met. Working for a chimney sweep. So how is dear old Bird? Traveling the world he is, off to points unknown. He's high, isn't he? Every day. His family is clearly in desperate need of a nanny. Now quick march and best foot forward and I'll thank you not to dawdle. So remember kids, when two strangers say they're going to force their way into your life and home, it's best just to go with it. Would have hoped I taught you better. Good heavens. Nope, from the other place. As you can tell from this creepy mirror shot. Seriously, just replace it with horror music and it's kind of terrifying. Either that or she's checking herself out. Mmm, that is Britain's ass. Blunt is honestly pretty good as Poppins, and really, to be fair, most of the actors do a good job with what they're given. But the motivations rarely make sense. For example, Poppins says this. I've come to look after the bank's children. Us? Oh yes, you too. Obviously indicating she's mainly there to help Michael and Jane. But... She almost never talks to them. Maybe the idea is through the kids she helps them out by making them better people. But the kids seem fine. I dare even say, so unoffensive they never make an impact on us. Because I don't like soap bubbles. God, that's so boy number two. Wouldn't it make more sense if the kids were more like adults taking care of things and Mary Poppins has to teach them how to have fun again, thus forcing Michael to act more like an adult? I mean, we see a second of something like that starting with the kids calling the plumber and running an errand later, but that's about it. If there are other scenes, they're not properly explored, meaning there isn't enough to give them a proper identity. Or even what should be the main conflict of the film much of an identity. Why not really flesh them out so this makes more sense? Did someone say this film's not practically perfect in every way? Yeah, you start off with good ideas, but never follow all the way through. Why don't you make the kids too bratty or too sophisticated? You know, give them an arc. Because that would go against the Disney formula. What? The children were simple and likable in the first film, so now it's part of the Disney formula we'll give you forever. Well, you're not shoving that Disney formula down my... Ooh, recycle plot points. Unimaginative story. Rushed script. You know, just because you make crappy new ones doesn't mean we'll forget how good the originals are. Oh dear. Is someone ready to snap? No, I'm good. Lovely. I've got my eye on you, critic. Ah! Spit spot. I'm a scared of Poppins. Mary gives the kids a bath in a musical number that's honestly fine. It's not as groundbreaking as some of the other numbers in the original Poppins, but it's still a good song with some nice visuals. Some people like to dive right in, can you imagine that? Hey, this really is Batman Returns! When does the penguin bite Georgie's nose? The only thing kind of odd is despite Blunt doing a pretty good acting job and not just an imitation of Andrews, her sternness is well played, but her smiling moments usually seem off. Something about Andrews pulled off both strict scenes and delighted scenes so perfectly. Blunt always looks like she's gonna kill someone whenever she smiles. It's never quite believable. 
Also, you totally missed a Jack Sparrow cameo licking his own brain in front of a hanging little boy. Na 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 na. Afterwards, the kids try to tell Michael about their adventures, but he's upset because he can't find the shares his father put away to help them in case a financial crisis like this happened. I don't mean to be cross with all of you. I, I've just lost something very important. Oh, this is going to be symbolic of how they lost a family member and how their anxiety over the finances are really tied to I'm that. I'm going to find it. I'm sure your grandfather... Or we don't do that. Could have really explored something meaningful there and found unique ways to deal with loss. But screw it, it's much easier just to say one bad guy is causing all your problems. Who'd have thought this slump would be so good for business, eh? Colin Firth plays a snobby British bad guy. Imagine. As Jane and Michael try to ask for proof of their stock, but it seems he can't locate it. Guess what, kids? More bank talk! Regarding the extension, there's very little I can do. Our father did leave us shares in the bank. You wouldn't happen to have any record of father's shares, would you? Doesn't seem to be a listing for George Banks here. Bring in all of George Banks' old files, would you? Okay, the other Poppins film had the bank as a boring place too, but it was... entertainingly boring. Cleverly boring. There were songs, there was choreography, there were funny characters. It was fun to watch as a child, even if you didn't know the details of what they were talking about. This one is long-winded, slow, and no kid in the right mind would follow it. In the first film, you get it. Michael wants his money to feed the birds and his father wants him to put it away. Done. Easy. No kid would be able to follow any of this boring as hell technical talk. Tell me which one of these a kid, or even an adult for that matter, would probably prefer watching. And you'll achieve that of Bring in the shareholder's ledger, would you, Miss Farthing? Mr. Dawes Jr., he'd know if father received shares, wouldn't he? Dear old Uncle Dawes is getting on in years. Sadly, that's why I had to take over for him. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, uh, died for a minute. Mary Poppins! On top of that, there's a big difference between a villain and an antagonist. In the first film, the bank is the antagonist. Here, it's the villain. The bank in the first movie is not evil. They think they're doing good by helping Michael invest. The idea is Michael is too young to be thinking of things like that. He should be allowed to still be a kid and spend what little he has on something ethical. Learning morality is the most important at that age. Then, when he's a little older, he can start saving up with the responsibility of knowing what's truly important. Mr. Banks isn't evil, he just lost track of what's important. Even Mr. Dawes isn't evil. He could have just taken the kid's money by force, but he waits for him to open his hand trying to convince Michael he handed it over. He's sneaky, but he doesn't think he's doing wrong. This guy clearly knows he's doing wrong, crumpling up the proof that can save Michael's house and burning it. And lose our chance to get that house? I don't like to lose, Mr. Fry. Yeah, whatever problems you're going through, don't try to understand it by seeing things from a different point of view. It's just some bad guy out there. You're just good, he's just bad, and any soul searching about understanding others that could bring people closer together. Super Kella blow that shit! There's just bad guys, and you found him! Problem solved! Why was this a classic again? Oh, because they didn't have an us versus them mentality? Pfft, stupid mature crap! Lorax was a hit, you idiots! Bad guy it is! I mean, it's practically perfect in every way. Snappy, snap. Oh, hello, Jack. Mary Poppins, how are you this fine evening? You know, Bert told me about you. Always friend zoning, right? The kids accidentally break a ceramic bowl that could possibly be sold to get money for the house. Hey, why don't you start by selling those kids robes you don't need? Christ, half the stuff in this mansion could probably pay off two houses! Actually, it was all three of them. The boat is speaking! It's useless now. Useless as a chocolate teapot. It's a well-known fact ceramic bowls sound like 1920s radio. Time to do the sidewalk thing. Now tread lightly, this is fine porcelain and we don't want to chip the glaze. It's a chamber pot too, so it might reek like Georgie's bedsheets. Hey! But he's... That's right, I'm Irish. I want a carriage ride! Seamus, would you mind? Not in the least. I, the Irish dog, would be more than happy to drive the English wherever they like. Racist! Royal Dalton Music Hall! Where's the music hall? I blew it up. They wanted a cover charge, so I covered them in ashes. 
It is nice to see hand-drawn animation again, and the design is very cleverly mixing the three dimensions of the bowl with the two dimensions of the paintings. But again, we've already seen this. It's a bowl instead of a sidewalk. Okay, what else? Nothing is ever upped in this movie aside from the technology. Which, as I said before, is good, but not groundbreaking like the original. Mary Poppins! Oh wait, there is one change, and big surprise, it sucks ceramic balls! Apparently, even the fantasy world has bad guys in it! Yeah, that's a thing now! Hurry along now, get yourself some peanuts and candy floss. Okay, this is like the fox from the merry-go-round scene suddenly being like, Would you look at that now? Tis an elegant merry-go-round house. I have plans for you. Ironic, because they sing a song called The Cover Is Not The Book. I guess that just means if they look like bad guys, they really are bad guys. Oh god, is Mary gonna do a striptease? I've seen her spoonful of sugar. It fed me, birds. The director of Chicago, you say? This is followed by, oh, let's just say what it is, the Lin-Manuel song. To the queen of the nation made a royal proclamation to the missus and the messes, the more or lesses bring me... Oh, blah, 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 Hamilton, 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 Hamilton. That elephant is giving me the dead eyes. Why do half the characters in this look like they want to slit my throat? I have plans for you. Speaking of which, the real threats show up as Georgie notices the wolf is stealing parts of their room. And yes, I know I said it wasn't gonna name the kids because they're forgettable, but come on, his name is Georgie and part two is coming out. The comedy police could arrest me for not referencing that! Well, well, if it isn't the boy who cracked the bone. Who cried wolf? God, even the obvious bad punch you don't go for! Time to go, boys! You're going to work in the Blood Diamond Mines. Your new name is 1654. Poppins, everybody! Isn't this what you think of when you envision a multi-academy award-winning movie? Actually, who knows? Now when I see the Jolly Holiday song, Bert's sung to Mary, I have to wonder if during that the kids were fighting off vampire penguins! I have to seriously consider that now! <laughs> Honey Badger don't give a shit! <laughs> Welcome to hell, children! If you feel something uncomfortable, that's just the everlasting damnation of your soul. They all wake up, as apparently it was a dream they all shared. I had a nightmare like that too. So did I. It seemed awfully real. I miss mother. Who? Oh, right, right. There's a dead mother in this, man. Poppin sings a nice song about remembering their mom, which is definitely needed because I think this is the first time the kids even bring up missing her. And we're halfway through the movie! Would have been nice if there was more focus on both the kids and Michael missing her and trying to bond as a family to get through it. But we need to focus on more important things, like psychotic kidnapping wolves and document burning bankers. You know, relatable stuff! Apologies, but despite your complaints, most critics agree this film is wonderful. What? Impossible! Really? Let's see how this film measures up. 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. Really? Now, let's see how you measure up. Cynical jackass who hates new things. I don't hate new things, I hate lazy things! I wish there was more new things in this, but the stuff that's kept the same is so emotionally empty and the stuff that's added is so unrelatable and cliched. It's not that it's new and smart, it's that it's acting like it's new and smart! Oh, come now. We're the best of both worlds. We're like a Disney reboot and a Disney sequel. Both of those Disney does infamously bad! Millions at the box office doesn't lie. Constant critical praise doesn't lie. But does that mean that gives you an excuse for fast, lazy writing? You forget, Critic. We're Disney. We're perfect in every way. What happened to Practically? I snapped it out of existence. Would you like another demonstration? No, I'm good! Very well. Enjoy the rest of what Mary Poppins is now and will forever be. I do believe in spooks, I do believe in spooks, I do, I do, I do believe in spooks, I do. I love things! Hello, things and things. I want things! How many things? All the things. 
May I have your credit card, sir? Number, 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 number. Yark, let me process that. <laughs> I'm sorry, your credit is not good enough for all the things. What? Oh! I've always had great credit. How did this happen? Yark, you should have used Experian Boost Me Mimiti. Yark, Experian is empowering consumers to increase their credit scores instantly. People can now get credit for the good behavior they have already been exhibiting for paying utility and phone bills they're already paying on time. Experian can do this? I didn't know that. Oh! It's all because of Experian Boost. Experian Boost is a game-changing product that puts consumers in control. And if that wasn't enough, it's also free. Let me try that rolling all again. Free. Yeah, that's better. It sounds like Experian's mission is to boost American credit scores so that millions of Americans can have better credit. Yeah. Oh! How? Experian Boost works by giving you credit for the utility and telecom bills you're already paying. So if you pay your bills like water, gas, electric, cable, cell phone through a checking or savings account, you could instantly raise your credit score. That sounds like a game changer. It truly is. This is the first time a credit bureau is allowing consumers to submit utility and telecom payments to be factored into their credit file. Phone's not even on. And only Experian is doing this. This is also the first time credit scores can be raised instantly. Most people who boost increase their scores by more than 10 points. Hey, am I a pirate or Scottish now? Oh! It sounds like this is a way to take back control. It is, and only positive payments will be factored into your credit file. It can only help you, not hurt you. Oh my god, a camera's watching me. In rare situations where a person's score goes down from boosting, they can instantly disconnect boost and their credit score will go right back to where it was. You'll literally have nothing to lose. Should I tell them how it could help me? Yeah, do that. My credit's usually pretty good, but with something like this, it can not only keep my credit score at a great place, but it can make it even better. Well done, lassie. I am not a dog. Sorry. Tell them how they can get it. Here's how you get it. Boost is only available at experient.com slash nostalgia. That's E-X-P-E-R-I-A-N dot com slash nostalgia. Why would anyone not want to make their credit better? I don't know. I'm just you as a pilot. Indeed you are. I like pencils. Experian Boost can potentially help you establish or increase your access to credit. Boost your score instantly and free by going to experian.com slash nostalgia. That's E-X-P-E-R-I-A-N dot com slash nostalgia. Yarg pencils. Hey, Doug Walker here letting you know some of the conventions we have coming up. From June 7th to 9th is Indie PopCon in Indianapolis. And you can get a discount on tickets if you just use the promo code AWESOME when purchasing them. From June 21st to the 23rd, we have Planet Funk in Iowa. This is our first time at this one, and it's sure to be a lot of fun. And from July 6th to 7th, it's Salt City Comic Con at the New York State Fairgrounds in Syracuse, New York. We have even more conventions this year, but these are the ones coming up, so go to the sites, get the tickets, drop on by, and say hi. We'd love to see you. So Poppins and the kids tried to visit someone who can fix the bowl. Jack offers them a ride in a whimsical scene. You know, as good as the songs are in this movie, the musical score is freaking obnoxious. Bouncing on a bike can be kind of neat, but after breathing under the ocean in your bathtub, talking with animals, and almost getting killed by Monopoly Balto, this really doesn't warrant a woe the whimsy music. But you know, that be subtle, and Mary Poppins is just a dumb thing for kids. You're not supposed to get that involved. Wimp! Here we are. Well, place your bets. Entrance to Hogwarts, Wonderland, or Chocolate Factory. There we are. No. What do you want? Ooh, I was wrong. Is the entrance to a Meryl Streep performance not trying to get an Oscar? Ooh, those are so rare! My whole world goes flippity-flop like a turtle on his back. Well, one way or another, we're doing a song on the ceiling. And at the exact same point as the other movie- Oh, you're used to that by now. And I don't know. My up from my down, my east from my vest, my topsy from my bottom -sy. Is it me or does she look like one of the in-between makeups from Mrs. Doubtfire? Anything I try to fix on second Wednesday goes Kim Fluey. I am so offended on behalf of the nationality of whatever accent she's doing. So they sing a song about seeing things from a different point of view. Again! This is like the fourth song that sings about that. 
You know what's ironic? You're always singing about seeing things differently when you're essentially telling the exact same movie again. Oh, woe is me. Now I'm on my head. How can that be? Well, you know, perhaps if the room kept spinning or the house flew over the neighborhood or something like that, that'd be kind of cool. But this really doesn't seem that magical because it's just an upside down room they prance around in. That's it! A set that's cool for about two seconds and then they just kind of run around in circles. That's a carnival funhouse, not magical whimsy! The cousin says she'll try to fix the bowl as Poppins and the kids run an errand at the bank. Because we're at that part of the movie now. Racist! They follow the two lawyers to the big bad banker who discusses his evil scheme maniacal laugh. You are not giving banks one more second to pay off that loan. <gasps> It's the wolf. Ah, yes, as the song goes, the cover is not the book, unless you had a dream about a cartoon wolf who held a watch a certain way. In which case, judge the hell out of that person, because you had a dream about it. It's just facts. Run! Close that door, Miss Farthing. Fool. Stop them. What would he even do if he caught them? Strap them to the bank chair. Your children burst into my office to seeing if anything can be done about extending your loan when they came in claiming I was trying to steal your house. I believe they're also communists. Of course Michael doesn't believe them as the big bad banker subtly threatens them. God, these are such emotional problems we can all identify with. After all, you don't want your father losing his position. He broke bones I didn't even know I had! What time is it? Oh, it's Get Lost in the Dark and Calorie Free Burke comes along to make everyone feel better with his pals o'clock. Keep a little light fantastic with me! Ladies and gentlemen, an even crappier version of Newsies. Aye. 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 Okay, so if we're supposed to think, oh wow, this is just as magical as the first time they did it. Let's really compare the two. At this point in the movie, it's a rush of energy, stunts, and music. It's clearly a set, but it doesn't feel that way. It's dancing on rooftops with all sorts of various shots and effects that make it feel like a whole wide world that you've never seen has been opened up to you. It's an incredible moment you wish would never end. This looks claustrophobic. It looks like a set, and it feels like a set. It's choreographed like a stage show as opposed to a movie. Which for something like Chicago is fine, as it's a movie about stage shows. But with Mary Poppins, you want to feel like something grander is being offered. You want step in time to keep going, switching from one cool location to the next. Here, you just feel trapped, like a school that dragged you to a children's play that brought in BMX bikers because the youngins are into that, right? Where in the first one you never wanted it to end, this one you just want it to stop so we can move on to the next scene you're ripping off from the first movie. Oh, the magic! <laughs> what on earth have you all been? Speaking of which, they find their way home as Michael yells at them for nearly costing him his job. And you, Mary Poppins, I thought you were here to look after these children. It wasn't her doing. It was me. No, it was us. Way to throw Georgie under the bus. Michael has a meltdown talking about, oh, that's right, a dead wife. That's still a thing, right? The kids sing the song Poppin' sung to them earlier, once again taking on the parental role, proving there is no arc for them as they were hinting they had the parental role before and even that they didn't do much of. So I have no idea how any of these characters are supposed to have changed. Oh wait, maybe they spontaneously beat it into me. The whole time I've been looking after them, they've been looking after me. Something so felt by the audience we had to spell it out for you. So I guess Michael learns that the kids were helping him. Did he not think that? Things seem chaotic, but his connection with the kids seem fine. Is he gonna focus on getting his life more organized? Well, nothing indicates that. He still works the same job and seems like the same person by the end. Mr. Banks in the original learns that being young and full of life is precious and he should let his children live that life while they still can. While the children learn that though he's not perfect, their father works hard and provides for them and they should learn to appreciate and respect that. Everyone here learns that family is good, which they already knew. And bankers are bad. Boo! Disney, we used to be good at this. So they pack up the house and plan to live at Jane's, but wait a moment! One of the papers Georgie used to patch up his kite is just the proof of shares they need to keep the house. Well, clearly Mary Poppins can just use her flying umbrella to take it to the bank. What's the time, anyone? Oh, seven minutes midnight. Seven minutes, it's not enough time. We need to be at the bank by midnight. M magic umbrella. Take the van. No, it's no good. You still wouldn't make it in time. Magic 
Umbrella! Go and gather the lyrics, right? Children, aren't we ready to bicycle? Mad. Chick. Umbrella! Have you ever ridden a bicycle like this before? Please, how different can it be from riding an elephant? I think that's a song we missed, but Magic Umbrella! This is why a stupid bad guy plot doesn't work in a world like this. The threats were emotional, not physical. But since they've changed that, now it makes no sense why this 90s kids film climax is taking place. I'm just waiting for black vehicles and fruit carts to be dragged out. Let up! I just wanted to remind you I'm Colin Firth. Back to the climax. Jane, let's, let's go fly a kite. Yeah, I'm positive that line was written to always be the start of an action scene. Mary Poppins, you're so back! <laughs> you know, it's funny. The climax of the original film is one of the most emotional things I've ever seen. It's simply a man walking to his job about to lose the majority of how he valued himself. It has no dialogue, no action, no exciting music. It's just a person walking to the end of a major part of his life, thinking about what's most important. Well, that's just kid shit! We need to turn back the clock so the big bad banker can't take away our house! Ooh, look at those bike stunts! Ooh, look at them climb that building! Hurry, 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 the big bad evil bank! Wow, suddenly I'm thinking about what matters most to me. Evaluating this eerie yet peaceful environment will I hold dear and I should focus my time towards. <sighs> Somebody needs to grow up! You need to catapult people into the air, man! The kid's going, yay! And the big bad bank trying to keep Jane and Michael from getting in to save their home! I mean, what's this? Banks looking at where the bur lady used to be? Making him question what's most important, a life of profit or simple pleasures? Suggesting that children watching the film can handle complex emotional ideas? <laughs> this is why people forget you're a thing! You need the kite to kick open the window! So the big bad banker's papers can go flying all over the place! And only at the last minute does Mary Poppins finally help by taking to the air because she has a goddamn flying umbrella! Man, <laughs> what a bunch of dog shit I've been watching all these years! Mary Poppins Returns, you're the update I've always been waiting for! Disney, I bow to you. No, seriously, go to goddamn hell! So even after all that, it appears- GODDAMN HELL! So even after all that, it appears it's still not enough to save the house, but Mr. Dawes Jr., cleverly casted with Dick Van Dyke, comes in saying he's taking control of the bank back and to leave the house alone. So when life's a real piece super, you must choose to be a trooper. My accent still sucks, but I can do this even though I'm a million. Bitches got nothing on me! Michael wanted to give his tuppence to a bird lady. He decided to give them to his father. Michael's father gave those tuppence to this bank. Wait, what? And after several quite clever investments, that tuppence has grown into quite a tidy sum. Enough to pay off that loan you took. Ah! I always kind of assumed Mr. Banks gave that money back to Michael. I mean, it is still his money, and he was fired from that job. Good to know he did the exact opposite of what Michael wanted at the time, arguably defeating the entire purpose of the movie. No, I guess the moral is the bank is evil. Don't devote your life to it. But if other people devote their life to it for you, allowing you to massively profit in the end, that's totally fine. Do you have any idea how to movie movie? What a beautiful day to be going back home. The only one London's supposed to get this year. We get a genuinely nice song and cameo from Angela Lansbury, presumably meant for Julie Andrews, but she was busy working on Aquaman, which was released the same day, and kicked its ass. Nice! Regardless, it is still a nice scene and a clever send-up to fly a kite, because it actually ups the visuals and the ideas, like what the rest of the movie should have been doing. Georgie! But is there any redemption for our big bad banker? Nope. Well, nowhere to go but up. Except for you, there's nowhere to go but hell, cause you're the villain, we're a kind movie. Poppins of course opens up her umbrella and properly exits. I won't forget Mary Poppins. Promise. I can never forget the horrors that I witnessed.
I'm very popular, y'all! Hey, Poppins, 2.0, where are you? Did someone summon my hellfire? Okay, I want to be fair. Fair? Because there are some decent things in this movie. The songs are good, the acting is good, some of the visuals and ideas are a good start. Oh good. I'll add another percent on Rotten Tomatoes. But those ideas are never fleshed out, and are instead replaced with a lazy, lazy, LAZY script! And you can't be lazy with Mary Poppins! The original had dignity, subtlety, and a surprising amount of restraint when you now see what it could have been. It will be remembered always as a classic. This will be remembered as that movie you put on to shut your kids up. It's bright and colorful and means very little, despite it trying to mean very much. And as movies like that go, you can show it to your kids fine, keep them distracted for a few hours. But that's not what Mary Poppins is supposed to do. Mary Poppins is supposed to entertain your inner child, but also challenge your inner adult, making you think hard about what's important, when it's important, and why it's important. It was brought to us by two people who believed in the story just as much as they believed in the kids they told the story to. This just feels like a corporate cash-in, trying to recapture the magic because, eh, it was still popular. Maybe we can do the same thing again and make a couple bucks. For some, those nostalgic feels will hit close to home, and if they do, I can't blame you. You're gonna have an emotional response to certain icons, and Mary Poppins is a very easy icon to get emotional about. But where that Mary Poppins was truly something special, this Mary Poppins is just another kid's movie. Created not to be unique, but just to make money. Where the original was the very definition of deep and simple, this is the very definition of shallow and complex. My dear little hobgoblin, do you know what I do to people who talk to me like that? I don't care. The movies you're trying to do reboots and sequels to deserve better than what you're giving them. What? A gigantic budget? Money means nothing without caring, and all you care about is making money off of these because they're popular, even if you don't understand why! They may look like the original characters and sound like the original characters, but poorly copying what they did doesn't make them the original characters, it just makes them a poor copy. And for the sake of those timeless characters you're trying to replace, I call bullshit. And I call upon the satanic powers of my snappy fingers. Worth it? Oh yes, your passion and remembrance brought us all back. Us? Dumbo! Lion King! Genie! Oh my god, all the originals are back! Originals? You ain't never felt pain like this. Chim chim chiru, bitch. Oh, bother. Oh my god, thank you all. And because you're such a pain animator, I'm just gonna talk to Mary right now. That's fair. Oh, Mary. It's so good to have you back. Well, as long as people like you never forget, I'll never truly be gone. So true. Don't agree with me too much, no one likes to suck up. So true. And don't use that same footage of you giving the same answer. Sorry. But Mary, will you ever truly return? No. But why would you want me to? Wasn't what we already had practically perfect in every way? I suppose so. So long, Mary Poppins. Don't stay away too long now. I just said I'm never coming back! Until we meet again. What a dumbass.
Hey, Doug Walker here. International Medical Corps is this week's charity shout out. This is a global nonprofit humanitarian aid organization dedicated to saving lives and relieving suffering. They do this by providing emergency medical services as well as healthcare training and development programs to those in great need. They're a private group with no political or religious affiliation. Their mission is to improve the quality of life through health interventions and related activities that strengthen underserved communities worldwide. With the flexibility to respond rapidly to emergencies no matter where in the world they occur, they offer medical assistance and training to people at the highest risk, always working to strengthen local healthcare systems and promote self-reliance. With an A rating on Charity Watch, this is a group that works hard to help so many people, and you can play a part in their mission. Click on the link and help those who already help so many.